show and tell, I immediately thought of elementary school. And my favorite time for show and tell in elementary school was in the fall. We could talk about our summer vacations. Our family always took road trips. We go to places like Niagara Falls, Crystal Cave, and I bring back, I don't remember photographs, a lot of uh, picture postcards, and that would be my show and tell. A few years ago, I went to Florida, and I had the opportunity to see a magnificent sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean from about 15 stories up. And this is a little unusual for me because I hardly ever go away, for one thing, and I hate to get up in the morning. And how this happened was I had met this friend, Trish, and she invited me to go to Florida with her. She had the opportunity to have a free room, all she had to do in a Marriott timeshare, and she had to listen to a sales pitch. So I didn't know Trish all that well, but I tend to be a little bit of an impulsive, and uh, she seemed all right, a little wacky, and, <laughs> and it was free, or close to free, at any rate. So almost from the very beginning, from the airport, I knew this was going to be a bumpy ride. The woman had gets in a fight with somebody on the phone, and she's yelling and screaming. I mean, people are looking really inappropriate. Then we were in, in the plane and start talking. She tells me she's so happy that we made friends because she doesn't have any friends. <laughs> and she especially doesn't have any women friends because they're all jealous of her. Big red flag. <laughs> and she refers to herself as bad boy magnet. This woman is pushing 50. <laughs> By the second, second or third day of this little trip in Fort Lauderdale, I can't stand the sight of her. So on Wednesday, I rent a car, and I decided to do some sightseeing, and it worked out good because she was going to visit some relatives herself, so she rented a car. So that evening, I went and had dinner on my own, and I went to a nightclub, and this is not the same story that some of you have heard before, and I meet a guy, and we're dancing and having a good time, and he invites me out on a date for the next night to go dancing, and I said, sure, I'd love to. So the next day was our last day in Florida. And I take Trish out to lunch to show her what a nice person I am and thank her for <laughs> inviting me down. And uh, also to tell her about my date, because I had a feeling this would not sit too well with her. So she was fine, but about two hours later, she mysteriously turns in her rental car. That evening, I'm getting ready for my date, and she's pouting around the room. And I said, Trish, why don't you come with us? If we're going to a dance club, you like to dance, we'll have a good time. She says, okay. We get to the dance club, she's not in a very good mood. She was parading around a little bit with this outfit that was, to say the least, embarrassing. <laughs> and around midnight, Jack, my date, and I decide to leave. And I say, Trish, we're gonna leave, we're gonna go get coffee, what would you like to do? She goes, I think this, you are so rude. I said, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but if you'd like to come, you're welcome to come. If you want me to pick you up later, I'll pick you up. Whatever you want, she goes, just take me back to the room. So I take her back to the room, go to meet Jack at the diner, and then we go and we're enjoying ourselves, walking around a bit, talking. A few hours later, I go back to the room, and I can't get in. My key's not working. So, um, I go down to the front, I call her first on her cell phone, I don't know if she's there or not, she doesn't answer, I go down to the front desk, the manager has strict orders not to let me in, and it's her room, not mine, so he's not going to let me in, I said, well, I don't have to stay there, but I want to get my stuff, I just shrugged, so I said, look, I'm going to call the police, I want to get my stuff out of that room. He says, never mind, I'll call him. He calls the police. The police come and I have to tell them this story, which is not a story at this point. And they knock on the door. No answer. They tell the manager to get the master key. He gets the master key. The door is now bolted. He opens the door, but it's bolted. She's in there. Now the police start banging on the door. Like you see in the movies, open up, police. So she, I have been, why these things happen? <laughs> so she opens, she opens the door and she says, oh, officers, I was scared to death she was going to bring a strange man to my room. Total lie, total. 
Well, they don't care, and they're freaking annoyed. They have better things to do than to settle a squabble between two middle-aged women. <laughs> Anyhow, I get my stuff. I ask the manager to find me a room. Now, after this free vacation, now, of course, I have to pay. He says, there's nothing available. I call Jack and start screaming, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. I thought you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I start crying. And at this point, the manager now feels a little sorry for me, and uh, he says to me, you could, you, could, you could shower in the locker room off the gym and change if you'd like, and you could rest in the Sunrise Lounge on the 15th floor. And that's what I did, and around 5.30 in the morning, people come barreling in to see this amazing sight of the sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean. So I saw my first and probably my last sunrise, and it was worth the trip. And that's my show and tell.